Shadbreet a socialist, Musharraf a conservative, and Adele a liberal, all aged four. Shadbreet an atheist, Musharraf an agnostic, and Adele a secular humanist, all aged four. You see what's going on here? Nobody would dream of tying a label round the neck of a child because of the, it, the opinions of its parents and say that is a postmodernist child or that is a Keynesian child or a monetarist child or a secular humanist child. The one exception is religion and it's an exception that we all buy into whether we're religious or not. Nobody, until they've had their consciousness raised, which is what I'm trying to do now, nobody thinks it's the slightest bit odd to talk about a Catholic child, a Protestant child, a Muslim child. But why do we go along with that? When, as I say, we wouldn't dream of describing a child as a neo-Marxist child. There is no such thing as a Catholic child. There is only a child of Catholic parents. There's no such thing as a Protestant child. There's no such thing as a Muslim child. In case you're wondering about the pictures there, by the way, they are of, quote, Catholic children trying to go to school in Belfast through a terrifying gauntlet of hatred and abuse from a Protestant mob. And you could see exactly the reverse as well. I can't repeat often enough, please raise your consciousness about the labeling of children with the opinions of their parents when the children are too young to know what their own opinions are. If we could just but break the cycle of handing on of these opinions from generation to generation to generation, who could deny that the world would be a better place? I'd like to think that our campaign to raise consciousness about the labeling of children is already succeeding. Um, some of you may know the comedian Marcus Brigstock, have perhaps heard him on the radio. Um, this is a little three-minute three extract from one of his performances, and it ends up with, I mean, it, it begins by, it's a fairly outspoken but funny attack on religion, um, but it ends up by making the point about uh, labeling children. Um, I have to apologize in this audience. There is one joke somewhere in the middle of this little monologue, which in, the, in this city might be considered poor taste, and I, I <laughs> having seen the... I don't want to end up like poor old Boris Johnson. <laughs> okay, let's see whether the sound is going to work. I, I hope the sound will work now. Hello. I'd like to start this week with a request, and this one goes out to the followers of the three Abrahamic religions, to the Muslims, Christians, and Jews. It's just a little thing, really, but do you think that when you've finished smashing up the world and blowing each other to bits and demanding special privileges while you do it, do you think maybe the rest of us could sort of have our planet back? <laughs> um, I wouldn't ask, but the thing is, I'm starting to think there must be something written in the special books each of you so enjoy referring to that tells you it's alright to behave like precious, petulant, pugnacious pricks. <laughs> Forgive the alliteration, but your persistent power-mad punch-ups are pissing me off. It's mainly the extremists, obviously, but not exclusively. It's a lot of mainstreamers as well. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about, okay? Muslims. Listen up, my bearded and veily friends. Calm down, okay? Stop blowing stuff up. Not everything that's said about you is an attack on the Prophet Muhammad and Allah that needs to end in the infidel being destroyed. Have a cup of tea, put on a Cat Stevens record, sit down and chill out. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what's wrong with a strongly worded letter to the Times? 
Christians, you and your churches don't get to be millionaires while other people have nothing at all. They're your bloody rules. Either stick to them or abandon the faith. And stop persecuting and killing people you judge to be immoral. Oh, and stop pretending you're celibate as a cover-up for being a gay or a nonce. <laughs> right, that's two ticked off. Jews! I know you're God's chosen people and the rest of us are just whatever. But when Israel behaves like a violent, psychopathic bully and someone mentions it, that doesn't make them anti-Semitic. And for the record, your troubled history is not a license to act with impunity now. So, when the letters come, and I'm guessing they will, <laughs> I can guarantee that each one of those faiths will be utterly convinced that I've singled them out for special criticism. Why did it have to be us? Islam is a peaceful faith. I don't see what's wrong with being Christian. We're a peaceful, loving faith. How dare you after all we've been through? We Jews know how terrible violence can be. You see, all of them will be convinced that they're the ones being picked on. The Abrahamic faiths are like scousers. They're always convinced they're it's harder than everyone else. <laughs> Right? And why is it that all of these faiths claim to be peaceful when even the most fleeting glance at a history of warfare will tell you otherwise? The relationship between religion and warfare is very similar to the relationship between ant and deck. You could have one without the other, but I'm not sure anyone would see the point. <laughs> like it, but it would at least be refreshing to hear one of them come out and say, Oh, our faith's fun as you like. We love a scrap, that's not we do. Honestly, our special book says fight, fight, kill, maim, fight, smash, destroy, fight, murder, kill, and fight. That's why I signed up, to be honest, I'm a bit naughty, you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, all of them claim to be peaceful religions. Yeah, peaceful right up to the point where someone takes something they think is theirs, or says the wrong thing, or looks at them funny, then it's fighty, smashy, kicky, punchy all the way. I know this will upset a lot of people, and frankly, I don't care. I'm getting so sick of religious people screwing it up for the rest of us. Please don't kill us. Seriously. As far as I'm concerned, this is the only chance we get. When we die, it's all over. There's no virgins and pearly gates waiting for us, no big beardy man saying... Right, so uh, how do you think that went then? Um... <laughs> Mi mi mix? Uh, oh, killed a lot of people in my name, I see. Yeah, yeah, not really what I had in mind, actually. Um, tell you what, have another go as a worm. <laughs> While we're at it, I'm sick of religious people forcing their children to define themselves by their parents' faith. A four-year-old is no more a Christian than he is a member of the Postal Workers' Union. <laughs> we want a fair working wage, decent working conditions, and time allotted to see the new Transformers film. Said a spokesman. Now a little more consciousness raising. We've all seen maps of the world showing what people believe in different places. The blue area, they're Catholic. The red area, they're Protestant. Uh, the green area, they're Sunni Muslim, etc. And you've seen those maps in atlases, and it just seems perfectly natural. That's what people believe in those areas. Now, in science, we have controversies because there's not enough evidence, and one of the most interesting ones is what killed the dinosaurs? Was it an asteroid? Was it a comet? Was it the rise of the mammals? Was it a virus? All sorts of, was it climate change, global warming, all sorts of things might have killed off the dinosaurs. Suppose that you saw a map that looked like that. In the blue areas, they all believe that a meteorite killed the dinosaurs. In the red areas, they believe it was a comet. In the orange areas, they believe it was a virus plague, etc. The idea is completely dopey, and yet we all accept it with respect to religious belief. That's to say belief about the cosmos, about the origin of all things, about morality. We've bought into the idea that it's okay to hold opinions because of the country you happen to have been born in, rather than because of the evidence, which after all doesn't change when we're talking about